Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do along with Jess, Ter- Jess Terrell and Scott Stewart, in which we usually discuss one of Burroughs's works in detail. Right now, we're using the mini podcast to do a chapter by chapter analysis of the 1912 novel Tarzan of the Apes. Today, we're going to be talking about chapter 18, The Jungle Toll. Uh, Now, please note that I will be including spoilers about this chapter uh, and possibly later novels in the series, and I do recommend that you reread this chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be uh, talking about it with the expectation that you're familiar with the events that take place. Now, my name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like pulp magazines and old-time radio, and I keep a blog about such subjects at Uh, comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Now, in this chapter, Jane's letter is used to fill in the backstory backstory of the Porter Party and the mutineers on their ship. There's a bit of a parallel between King, the original leader of the mutineers, and Black Michael from the earlier chapters, in, in that both were clearly criminals and killers, but had a bare minimum standard of decency towards those they had stranded along the coast. Anyway, Burroughs does continue to follow the logic of Tarzan's character and experience. He can figure out from the letter that Jane thinks that he, as the forest god rescuer, is different from the Tarzan who wrote the note, and he isn't clear on why. His ability to read and write English without being able to understand it as a spoken language is strange, and Burroughs continues to follow up the consequences of this. Burroughs simply writing, I am Tarzan of the Apes on Jane's letter before returning it, is, of course, far short of the needed explanations to let Jane know who he is, but it makes sense from Tarzan's perspective that he would think it was adequate. Jane and the others make the reasonable assumptions about Tarzan's signature, but these assumptions are wrong simply because the overall situation is so bizarre. Tarzan's eventual love letter to Jane is fun on several letters. It's kind of funny, but it's also a little touching, and once again, we see Tarzan's lack of experience with civilization getting in the way of his communication skills. It's also understandable that Tarzan is initially reluctant to approach the group, with Burroughs citing the natural timidity of wild creatures as the cause, though one can argue an element of human shyness might be in play here as well. Tarzan is so close to having people in his life he can call friends and even act as a friend and and even he even acts as a friend and guardian towards them by providing them with food, but he can't quite get himself to take the next step until it's almost too late. In this chapter, we also get the most overt examples of Esmeralda's antics being pure racial caricature. And this, of course, is a common comedy trope of the time, but it it simply falls flat now. Jane is taken by an ape. We find out in the next chapter that this is Tarzan's old enemy, Terzak, and the situation changes rapidly. Here we get our best look at Professor Porter, with the shock of Jane's disappearance and, from his point of view, probable death, bringing him as close to a realistic outlook uh, on the situation as he ever gets. The scene in which he decides to go into the jungle to look for her, knowing it's hopeless, and knowing that he's really just going out to die with her, is one of Burroughs' most touching moments as a writer. Quote, Professor Porter finally broke the silence. His tones were no longer those of the erudite pendant theorizing upon the abstract and the unknowable, but those of a man of action, determined, but tinged also by a note of indescribable hopelessness and grief, which wrung an answering pang from Clayton's heart. I shall lie down now, said the old man, and try to sleep. Early tomorrow, as soon as it is light, I shall take what food I can carry and continue the search until I found Jane. I will not return without her. His companions did not reply at once. Each was immersed in his own sorrowful thoughts, and each knew, as did the old professor, what the last world words meant. Professor Porter would never return from the jungle, unquote. Cecil's decision to go with him adds to the poignancy of the scene, as does the final sentence of the chapter, spoken by Porter after he tells Philander to stay behind and look after Esmeralda. There, are, there be enough dead things in this cruel forest as it is. Come. Let us try to sleep a little. Well, that's it for this chapter, for chapter 18. We'll be back again soon with more mini podcasts and always keep an ear out 
for our full length episodes. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you are enjoying these podcasts, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes. Thank you.